Welcome back everyone, this is theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of wikibon.org. And we're live from Barcelona, Spain, and we're excited to have our next guest, Colin Mahoney, Vice President, General Manager of HP Vertica, Big Data Man. Great to have you on. We've, we knew you when you were a startup. <laughs> and then came into the HP. You guys are doing some amazing things. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome back to theCUBE. Oh, it's alumni. awesome to be here. I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's all, I love hanging out with you guys. It's always we great. We love talking to you, because you know, you, you're you like kid in a candy store, what yep. Dave and I always say, because yep. you have the entrepreneurial spirit, okay, you're in a big company in HP that now has an entrepreneurial spirit, a lot of action going on, big data center stage. You got the pick of the litter of resources, great sales force. So give us the update on the business. Obviously, there's some surprises coming on the keynotes, which we heard a little bit of a rumor. We won't go in there, but what's going on? Give us a quick update. Prior to the keynote, George Kadifa is going to go on at two o'clock, between two and four here in Europe. But give us a taste of what's new since we last talked. Yeah, so definitely don't miss the keynote. We've got some uh, great, very exciting news. A uh, wonderful customer of ours will be up there with George. But, uh, I think you summarized it well, John. I think things are going well. I am a kid in the candy store, and no better candy store than right here in uh, Barcelona, Spain at the Discover Show. There's just so much innovation happening here. And, and as you guys know, knowing us when we were a startup, uh, you know, we always had a hard time getting hardware or getting services resources or getting reach into the global markets, and that's not a challenge for us at all. And so whether it's HPIT, using Vertica internally, us learning from them, whether it's us working with the enterprise group, Antonio Neri with the new appliance that we have, the Converge System 300, enterprise services offerings around our Haven big data platform. You know, it's just so fun. You know, we always sometimes get, uh, get, get called, we're critical of HP, and you know, sometimes we're, we have a critical analysis, but we're very pro HP, as you know. But I got to say, the, the HP mojo right now, with the people that are working in the company, are, is on, very entrepreneurial. You can see the hustle, right? Yep. And you know, the, the, part of the entrepreneurial spirit is hustle. And it, you see a lot of great hustle from a lot of the HP employees, the executives like Antonio Neri, we were talking about earlier, he's going to be on, coming on theCUBE. We had Johan on earlier. Good people, really, really you know, kind, high integrity. So congratulations, great to have a great work environment. Um, so with that hustle, what are you guys knocking down in the marketplace? Give us, some, give us a taste of some business updates of what you guys have, are winning. How's the product doing? How's Haven doing? What's new? What's, what's new with the product? Yeah, so uh, things are going great. On, on the Vertica side, we shipped Vertica 7 yesterday, a massive release for us. Uh, we introduced something called Flex Zone, which is basically a drop zone for data, uh, flexible schema capabilities. You don't have to do a lot of rigid work to get the data in. So our methodology is store, explore and serve, and Vertica 7 has just so many great things. Also some really tight Hadoop integration, as you know, we already did a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Improved security with Hadoop and a whole bunch of other things like our Java SDK. So Vertica's going great, and then as you know, and as you mentioned, Vertica is a critical part of the Haven big data platform at HP, and we're doing some phenomenal work with autonomy and enterprise security, uh, as well as services, and building out some of the end applications, we already have probably about 10 applications by HP software, by the various groups that are powered by the Haven infrastructure. So that's going great, and I think, you know, as you mentioned with HP, there is a lot of excitement. I think the employees are happy. I think our CEO, Meg, empowers us to innovate. At the same time, she wants us to focus on the key opportunities and really execute, and that's what you're seeing right here. The common feedback on Meg is, is that she's not um, beating employees with, uh, with, with fear, but more you know, enabling, giving a little more you know, positive encouragement, although there's still you know, not fear, but like deadlines, P&L. Um, so that's, you can feel it, you can see it th through the organization. Yeah, I think the communication that comes from the top and works throughout all the regions, all the product groups in this organization, has been tremendous. And what happens is when you get that communication, groups start working really well together. And I think that was a, a historical challenge of HP, getting the business units to work together. And now we come up with joint solutions around Haven, around appliances, focusing on some vertical markets with 
what they're trying to achieve with big data as opposed to just speeds and feeds. Yeah, oh, yeah go ahead, Dave. So Colin, uh, when we first met, um, we actually met on the plane, I remember it well, because yep. I learned a lot from that conversation, yep. but, but I had asked you at the time, everybody was announcing Hadoop distributions, John joked in theCUBE that SiliconANGLE was announcing a Hadoop distribution, yeah. and you said to me, we're not going to do that, yep. that's not our game, you know, we've got a, a, a different view, we're going to go up the stack and, and, and create a platform. And I wasn't really sure exactly what that, what that meant. Maybe I'm not sure, you were sure at the time, but you had that vision, and, and that's what Haven has become. So I want you to talk about the, the marketplace a little bit, the, the sort of the Hadoop players, have, there's been a little bit of consolidation, you're seeing you know, Cloudera say, well, we're not really even in that business, we're, comp we're co competing against you know, other people, and yep. you know, Hortonworks is doing its thing, and so I think it was smart for you guys to stay out of that, but I kind of wanted to revisit that a little bit, but talk about you know, sort of the Haven vision and, and as John said, where are you knocking down you know, business? We were at the Vertica user conference in, uh, in August, so we had a lot of really good customer examples. What's new you know, since then? So we can start with sort of the marketplace, where yep. you're playing, you know, where that haven layer fits, and where you're having success. Yeah, so the, the first thing I'll say is the H in haven is for Hadoop, right? So uh, we're big believers in Hadoop. We have lots of customers that are leveraging Hadoop and Vertica. We invest a lot in that cross link, but as you said, we support all of our partners there, whether it's Cloudera or it's Hortonworks or it's you know, Mapbar or it's the Apache distribution or Intel. Uh, so we really have been open about how we want to interact with, with those vendors. And obviously, um, you know, Hadoop kind of continues to evolve as it should. Um, but for us, I think the way you put it of sort of being a layer above and being, that is part of a larger platform that, that we're building. And when we talk to our customers, they want it all. You know, they want unstructured data, they want structured data, they want MapReduce, they want SQL, they want Java, they want web services. And so we are giving that to them both from an integration perspective, also from an interface perspective. And so I think it's really important, especially as HP, that we don't get locked into we're only going to have this one flavor. HP has always prided itself on best in class, but, but still open standards approach. What about cloud? Where does cloud fit in there? Because um, everybody you talk to, you know, whether it's uh, 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 the guys at Pivotal trying to get into the business, they got their cloud play. You know, uh, other guys like Cloudera, they have you know, whosoever cloud you want. You guys have HP cloud. Yep. What's your cloud angle? on this whole thing, because they seem, big data and cloud just seem to go together. Yeah, they do go together. I, I think the only challenge for big data with the cloud is just how do you get all your upload to the cloud if you have a lot of data because of the just the transport yeah. side. But uh, HP has public cloud, we've got private cloud. You probably saw us in, you know, in some of the uh, analyst reports. We're, we're just dominating, uh, especially in the, the private cloud space right now. And so we are leveraging all those organizations in here to offer, again, choice to our customers. If you want us on the public cloud, we can do that with HP, we can do that externally. If you want us with a private cloud, we can do that. And if you want to set up a hybrid, you might want some things on your private cloud or in your private infrastructure, others on the public. So we support it, we are investing in our platform to make that better, that experience better. And uh, I think there's no question about it with mobility, cloud, security, big data is basically the aggregation of in many ways, all of those things together. And it's a big part of your, we heard, we had Robert Youngjohn's on earlier, he was talking about the big push toward developers. I mean, that, that seems, John and I talk about all the time, to be a, a, a critical aspect of attracting developers, is, is even if it's in, in you know, startup, pr proof of concept, test and dev phase, having that developer community, those guys are all going to want to develop it in, in, in the cloud. Yeah, and I, that's right, I think that's where, apps can't be developed in nine months anymore. You've got to be able to quickly prototype these things. And Vertica's always had an incredible developer community with our community edition, our downloads, you guys were at the user conference. I mean, you saw yeah. our user community, not just data scientists and business analysts, but we have a lot of applications and programmers tying in, and that is the community that's building these next generation N apps. And yeah. that's why, you know, Robert, myself, George, Meg, everybody believes those are critical for us. So as a what business. is your developer conference? Uh, the next one will be in August. It'll be our, our second one, and it's going to be broader. It's going to be uh, the user conference That's the user or developer. Conference. It's the user conference. But but how about programmers? It's a great great question. So the the second user conference that we're doing this year is going to have a huge focus on the developers because that is one thing that we realized last year is your users are developers. Well, 
it's users aren't, they're not exactly the same. Oh, okay. And there was great feedback from all of them, and some of the developers wanted more of the hardcore, show us the inside, and we didn't want to put everybody through that, so we'll have the tracks as we're yeah. getting larger. As so you get a, mix and mix, a mixed bag, a mixed bag. Geek out deep on day one, even? Or yeah, no, yeah, or something extend it with a, with a geek oh, out. Yeah. And well, we look forward to, uh, to covering that with you guys. So I got to ask on, on that, what, what are you seeing for big trends? trends? Last week, uh, I was in San Francisco for Spark Summit. Yep. A lot of attention coming out of Berkeley, Databricks. It's still the talk I'm in this, this hallway is about columnar data stores. I roll my eyes and laugh inside because, you know, his Vertica, you know, good, good call. Um, but Spark's getting a lot of in memories, getting a lot of attention. Yep. You're seeing these new communities explode. What are you seeing for, for trends out there that you're keeping your eye on? Well, we, uh, we've always been working with the memory side, and we're in a great position here at HP because we're leaders from a hardware perspective in that. Uh, for us, it's been a combination of- What do you think of Spark real quick? Uh, you that? know, I don't know, I don't follow it that close. I probably couldn't, couldn't comment. It's always dangerous when you ask a software guy to <laughs> make those kind of comments. But, but for me, we, we believe that the, the way information goes is you're going to have a hybrid. You're going to have some on disk, some on magnetic disks, some on SSDs, some pinned to memory, depending on the size of your data. And at petabyte scale, which we deal with often, it's not realistic yet to put it all in yeah. memory. And so we want to make sure that we can leverage all those things as we do today. Yeah. But I think uh, in-memory computing is Streaming absolutely is big. Popular. Streaming's always uh, been popular and there's a lot of innovations getting in. People ask me, what do I think about, how do I think about our, our roadmap? For me, it's Number one, make it easy to get the data in, right? Flex Zone and Vertica 7 does that. Number two, do a lot more with the data once it's in there. So store, explore, analyze it in more ways. And number three, deploy it anywhere. And that's the cloud, it's the appliance, it's software only. And we're absolutely committed to scale out software only, but we've got to mix it up and make sure that people can consume it. I think the biggest change right now from say last year is there's not as maybe as much, even though big data is still all over the place, when I talk to CIOs and when I talk to business people, they know exactly their projects that data can help them with. And I think a year ago, they didn't exactly know how is this going to help. Uh, we just did an announcement with Conservation International. Um, a lot of NGOs, in fact, know exactly what they want to do with the data. They might need help and resources, you know, which we love giving them. But, but they know exactly what they want to do versus a year ago where it was much more missionary. All right, let's talk about the App Store. So we were talking to Robert about that and you know, there's a lot of like, coolness coming out of the Vertica autonomy and the big data haven model and all this good stuff, all goodness coming out of it. So the developers will naturally be attracted to you guys. So it's clear that you guys have that on the, on the roadmap. A double down on the user conference on your end, fix that. Autonomy's looking at a developer conference as well. Yep. Um, so how are you going to get developers? What's the value proposition for the developer? Is it distribution? Is it uh, monetization? Um, well, I think so. What, what, what do you guys, what do you guys, how do you guys talk to developers? De developers need a couple of things. First of all, I think one of the things they like the most is the community, both to contribute and to gain back from the community. So um, we're making sure that if you look at our marketplace, that community experience is very rich. And Fortunately for us, it's another area where HP just had phenomenal assets when it comes to the, the app store, the marketplace, those types of concepts that we're leveraging. Uh, the second thing is I think you've got to give them an area to display what they're doing if that's what they want to do. A lot of our partners have already said, we've developed all these libraries, SDKs, that could plug into the Vertica platform. We'd love to share those with the world and let people know about them. So you're, like any marketplace, you're giving them a spotlight whether or not they want to charge for it or not, and we want to let them monetize that. So, and then thirdly, I think it's learning about something that you don't know so you're a structured data person, but you want to tie into some of the unstructured. How do I do unstructured? Giving that teaching and education and training through the community and, and that marketplace developer zone is really important as well. So I remember I, uh, the first year we had you on at HP Discover, I think it was 2011. I remember, John, we, uh, one of the, uh, the, the talk tracks on theCUBE was, why aren't they talking more about Vertica? And, and <laughs> we were thrilled yesterday, uh, Meg talked you know, it's incessantly about Vertica, which is the right thing to do, but, you're, but the most impre more, more impressive thing was your CIO, John Hinshaw, talked about, I'm sure a lot of you have you know, data warehouses, old data warehouses, I had a lot in my you know, old job, and, and he goes, and I have a lot in my current situation too. And then he talked about how HP is bringing in Vertica. I, so I wonder if you could talk about your relationship with HP IT and how it relates to what you're doing 
with other customers. Yeah, so, so HPIT has been amazing for us. I mean, we are a Fortune 15 uh, corporation, so you can imagine we've got a amazing IT organization, and having them as a customer, having them as a product management feedback <laughs> mechanism, and as you saw uh, here at the show, having them as you know, sort of stewards and helping us advertise the mission is really important. I think um, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. When we were first acquired, I don't think many people knew about Vertica or what we were. And our belief is if we, if we focus on building great product and we deliver it and we partner internally and externally, eventually water will find its own level, word will get out, we will solve problems, and, and it'll get recognized. And I think kudos to the Vertica team for continually creating great product, great solutions. And what HPIT does for us is they give us that rapid feedback. So we have a safe environment, although it's a real environment, to test ideas off of them. And these are the real users. These guys are doing things with data that you couldn't imagine from a data warehouse perspective to um, every other type of analytic application. So that, that's been a great partnership for us as well. So I got to ask the question as a customer, right? As a, you know, euphemism for a customer, is my data warehouse, my legacy data warehouse, is it a dinosaur? I mean, is that essentially what you guys are doing within HP? You're not obviously going to rip and replace, yeah. that doesn't make sense, but, but a lot of the things that you were trying to push your data warehouse to do, that it couldn't do, it was never designed to do, even though a lot of the marketing promised it would do that, um, you guys can fill that space around it, you and the ecosystem. Is, that's what ha is that what's happening in the marketplace? Are a lot of these data warehouses being sort of pinned back and pigeonholed into what they were originally architected to do. They are. And I, what's the future? Yeah, so, so if you have a traditional enterprise data warehouse, chances are you paid too much money, and chances are that your performance is not where it should be. Does that mean you should just go into the core and replace it right away? No, there's investments that have been made, and we get that. But what we are doing is absolutely taking out traditional data warehouse vendors. And this is slightly a change. Two years ago, I think when we talked about this, that wasn't the market we were going after, but we're being drawn into that by CIOs that are sick of writing these ridiculous checks. And so we have a disruptive technology, performs orders of magnitude better at a fraction of the cost. So there's value there, and we're going at that market. In fact, we're being, we've been pulled into that market. We're still doing all the other innovative clickstream analytics, yeah, all yeah. the new data, and, and frankly, that new data is the biggest challenge to these very dinosaur-like yeah. old it's, EDWs. It's interesting, you guys, you know, some startups and some companies, they, they target markets and they, they market to them. You guys got pulled in because you're the aspirin for the, for the problem and then you, they see the new opportunities with the new yeah, data. Yeah, one's reporting and one's yeah. revenue. Which yeah. one do you so, want to focus so on? So you can yeah. kill two birds with one stone, actually probably should charge more. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, that's, yeah, a good, that's, a good, that's a good product. That's called product market fit, as they say in, in, the, in the business. Um, so I want to ask you a different question on, uh, to end the segment. Um, tell us, uh, in your own words, something that's, so, a few things that have surprised you in the past six months. What out in the marketplace, what relative to HP, Vertica, big data, what, what's, what's a few things that really caught your eye and surprised you that you didn't think was going to happen? Well, so certainly the topic we just discussed is one surprise. The fact that so many folks are reaching out to us saying, I know you told us that you want to do this, but we really need you to come help us here. And that's a temptation for any product solution provider, and we have to be careful which areas we focus on. But it has been a surprise. I've been amazed at, at, at the market and the If a lot of, of people ask interest. the same, have the same big bright problem, that's a market, right? It's a broader yeah. market opportunity. It is, I think the, the, the other second surprise to me is just how challenging it is to find people in this space. I, I, I think finding great people who understand the business and they understand analytics and data, it's challenging. I mean, you guys know all about the data scientist type and nobody knows what that job role you know, really means, uh, even though it's critically important. But another shock is, you know, in this economy, which you know, isn't the, our best economy over the last few decades, this is an area where you are guaranteed a job, and, and it's challenging to, to yeah, find I mean, great almost, people. Almost, we always say, grow your own. Yeah, and that's I mean, exactly what we do a lot of. Yep. You grow your own <laughs> data scientist, I like that. Oh, no, it's good, I mean, you can either go to the, you know, get the apple in, in the barrel, and get, you know, that's out there for a while, or go pick one fresh from the tree out of the college. Uh, okay, so, yeah, so to end the segment, I got to go down that road. What computer science programs are you looking at? 
Well, we've always done a, <laughs> I, that's another great thing about Vertica is our, the roots of Vertica came from universities. This started as an academic project. So we were always tightly embedded. We're working with so many universities, University of Pittsburgh, Carnegie Mellon, MIT, up in the Boston area, Tufts, Brown, UMass Amherst, I mean, University of Wisconsin, Stanford, the list goes on and on and on. Um, we just want great people who That's love what they do, strategy. have passion, want to come in, work with us in some of the coolest customer environments, mm -hmm. and have fun. We're on a mission, and, and we are looking for great people to jump on board. Colin Mahoney, VP, General Manager of HP Vertica. Um, great to have you inside the Cube. Thanks for sharing your perspective. Um, just great to, to see you guys being so successful. Great product. You know, it was one of those products that just was like an engine, you know, and now the car's being built out around you. Congratulations, and, uh, and uh, we'll stay in touch. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier Thank with you. Dave Vellante. We'll be back Thanks, with our guys. next guest after this short break. We're live here in Barcelona, Spain. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs>